Hey guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today I'll talk about a question I have received quite a few times from different people. So as it seems to be something you want to understand better, today I'll teach you how to find the right direction of the light in photography. But not before, the intro. <laughs> You know, I was about to record this video and I was thinking of how obvious it is for me to find the right direction of the light today and how fun it is that it looks obvious to me now because it hasn't always been that way. As a matter of fact, for a very long time, I couldn't quite get it. Finding the right direction of the light was not something easy for me at all. And I hope the tips I'm about to give you will help to make it obvious to you just as magic. Also, just like magic, please make me very happy by clicking the like button and subscribe to my channel. I can't tell you how thankful I am when you do that. So let's start with the standard. You're probably sick of hearing that if you light your subject well, you will make great photos, right? Okay, but what does to light well a subject mean? I'll give you some practical examples of how that works both to indoor shots as to outdoor shots. So stick with me until the end of this video and you will learn all you need to know in order to take better photos using the light in your favor. If you're indoors and if you have a diffuser such as a softbox or an octobox, you can either place your light in a 45 degree angle right over your head facing down facing your subject. That's exactly how I've been using my light to all of my indoor photos and videos like this one lately. The closer you keep the light to your head and the bigger the diffuser is, the softer the light. A soft light will give your photos a more natural look. When you light your subject this way, you will have one side of your face more lit than the other and this will give you a more dramatic look to your photos and videos. The biggest the difference between the lit and the dark side of the face, the more dramatic your portrait will look. This type of lighting is used a lot in Hollywood and I particularly absolutely love it. But if you want to go with a more neutral mood that is usually used in comedy movies and the news for example, you might prefer to have a more even light and simply have your light in front of you. Just the same, right over your head from above, but lighting in the face from the middle in a way your face or your subject's face will look more even. Or if you have two lights and diffusers, you can place each one of them on one side of your subject like this, facing 45 degree angle down to your subject. You can also want to have a silhouette shot of your subject and on that case you will light your subject from behind with the light facing straight forward to the back of your subject. Then you will take your exposure down in a way your light will be exposed correctly and your subject will be underexposed. And then voila! Okay, you cannot go wrong with the direction of the light for indoor photos if you follow these tips. But what about outdoor shots? After all, when we're out there, we have many different factors that influence the quality of the light, right? First things first, think about your outdoor shots as an extension of your indoor shots. It's the exact same thing, but now you will deal with the sun that is our natural source of light. The clouds or any other white objects can be seen as giant diffusers. For that reason, cloudy and snowy days are great for portrait photos. Okay, that still doesn't help you with the direction of the light, right? Sure, but what I mean is it's just the same. Face your subject towards the light or in a 45 degree angle directed to the sun and just as for your indoor lighting, the sun should never be right above your head. If you place your light exactly above your head, in studio for example, you will create heavy shadows under your nose and the eyes and that's something that will happen if you shoot when the sun is high up in the sky, you know? You will get very hard light and shadows. When the sun is high up in the sky, it acts as if you had the light right 
above your head with no diffuser. A harsh light does not make good portraits. So if you're shooting when the sun is high up in the sky, I suggest to look for some shadows, but still have your subject facing where the light hits him or her harder. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you're in the shadow, you have, uh, let's say, a tree on one side of your face and a lake right in front of you. You might want to make your subject, or if you're shooting yourself, you might want to face the lake as the lake will reflect the sky and will most possibly bring some diffused light back to your subject's face. While if your subject is facing the tree, you will get the shadows from the tree and therefore less good diffused light to your subject's face. If you're shooting on sunny days and you want to shoot in the sun, early mornings and ends of afternoons are great for portraits. You will get the light that will fill your subject's face with a beautifier called soft and well diffused light for golden hour. Is having your face or your subject's face towards the sun always the best option on this case then? Not really. Sometimes if you have the sun behind the trees and you have an open field in front of you, you will still have a very well lit environment that will allow you not only to have a soft diffused light to your subject's face, but also a very beautiful background with some amazing bokeh. If you already shoot indoors, a great tip is to put your subject in a position where the light will simulate the light you have in the studio. If not, ask your subject to move around and in case you're not sure what the best light is, try it out. Stand in front of your subject and ask him or her to face different angles. Go around him or her with your camera and see where you can get the best results. Five or six shots in different directions should help you to be able to see what looks best in case you don't know just by looking to your subject and the surroundings. That's actually what worked best for me in the beginning when I didn't have much experience or lighting references. And that is all for today, guys. I hope these tips help you to find the right direction of the light to your photos. And I would absolutely love to know if these tips were actually helpful to you. Do you know any other tips to find the best light for your photos? If so, I would love to hear them. So please just drop me a line down here in the comments, sharing your tips, your experiences, the story of your life, your less romance or what you've been up to, uh, I'm just kidding, I probably won't be able to help with most of those things. But anyway, let me know how you like this video and if there is something else specific that you would like me to talk about here on this channel. I would love to help you out. Thanks so much for watching me and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!